Hello, hi, and welcome to BBL Friday Face. BBL, of course, stands for Bold Beautiful Life. That is my page. I'm Savannah Polson, and I am excited to talk to you today about a couple different things. First up, um, I have my makeup routine today. I'm going to do something pretty soft and subtle. I've had a lot of questions um, lately about something that's a little bit more simple, maybe just a couple colors on your eyes or something um, that doesn't require as much like detail or practice um, to create just a light dimension that you could wear day or night. Um, and so I'm going to use really soft colors. Um, I have my palette stocked. I'll show you that. Um, I have my palette stocked with pretty neutral tones here, um, as you can see. So I just have a couple little pops of color because I feel like that's important in a neutral, in a, in a pretty neutral um, toned face. Hi friends, hi! Um, and so uh, I will be showing you that in a second, but also this is the kickoff of another really fun giveaway week. I decided to do another one. I don't know how many of you um, remember the one from July, the customer appreciation giveaways that I did, um, but this one is a whole new one just like that. So let me know, tell me, give me some hearts or something if you remember the one from this summer. So today's giveaway is a $300 mascara gift card. Isn't that fun? Well, it's not really a gift card, but it's a shopping credit. So I will send you $300 worth of mascara products. Hey, hey, yay, cool. I'm glad that you ordered stuff. So if you want to try these makeup products that I love, then there is a link above um, to my direct website, and there's also a link to um, send me a photo so that I can give you suggestions on colors if you want. Um, I use mascara beauty products. I'm an independent mascara beauty artist, meaning that you can buy these makeup products um, from me directly. And um, hold on, my daughter's coming in. And um, here we go. Hi, buddy. Guys, you got to check out her bed head. <laughs> Look at this bed head. <laughs> she oh. busted her little lip the other day, huh? And you got some breakfast on your face. But her bed head is pretty rad. Huh? Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> She's going to go play with my husband now. Um, okay, so I'm glad some of you are remembering those. So make sure that you are sharing the love. The hashtag is BBL New Year Love. And so we're going to do this New Year event because I love you. So that's where all the words came from. Um, and so I am going to give that away today on, well, I'm going to announce the winner at the end of the event for all of the things. So you have all week to continue entering all of the giveaways. Um, so if this not is not as clear as mud by now, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do this. This is why live videos sometimes are a disaster. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. So today, there's a giveaway connected to this live video for $300 of Mascara Beauty products. Um, make sure that you're sharing this out. The hashtag, if you want to use it on anything, I will pull winners from hashtags and stuff like that sometimes um, throughout the week. And so it's going on here and on Instagram. Um, and I am not going to post a giveaway on Sunday because Sundays are a day that I just hang out with my family. So there is a giveaway today and tomorrow on Saturday, and then there are giveaways next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So seven days of giveaways, cut Sunday out of the middle, and watch out for them both on here and on Instagram. And we're gonna have a big party, our own New Year's Eve party that's not on New Year's Eve. So you just need to um, make sure you're commenting here, and for this, one to be entered. Um, comment here, engage, like, all that stuff. Share it out with your friends. Um, the more people we can get in this party, the better. And I will choose a winner from someone who's engaged here on this Facebook Live. Um, and so um, the other giveaways will have different requirements for entry. Cool? Did I just take like 20 minutes explaining that and still people are going to be under or confused? Um, 
Okay, bye Allison, have a good shower. Okay, so I am going to jump into doing my makeup today for you guys um, because that is the whole reason for the giveaways, for the makeup. So here we go and I have my mini double decker. This is my favorite size of palette if you're wanting to just start out. Um, there are some of you who have been here with me long enough and have become obsessed with this makeup as I have and you've moved on to my like the bigger size palettes um, like these so don't worry there's room to grow but also don't be overwhelmed because you can get whatever size a compact you want if you want to start everything's customized personalized all of that stuff and um, you just fill it and you can get different size compacts free based on how many you order. So, cool, cool. Okay, so I have my mango highlight. I've had this one for like ever. I don't think I've ever replaced my mango highlight. So a year or something. Um, and then this is a brand new amber that I have. I go through my amber maybe every two to three months. And this is my contour. I'm doing olive today because I want to do like a lighter, more subtle look for you guys. Um, not as drastic of a contour. So this one here is the Bella bronzer. I've had mine since Mother's Day. Um, and I still have at least half of that this is my rose gold illuminator and I've had that for like a year I use it mostly on my lips now that we have our powder illuminators but I'll show you that then this is Frenchy blush I don't think I've showed you guys Frenchy for a while at least um, okay and then on the bottom of this palette I have you complete me this one is called glamazing and it's a powder illuminator I'll show you that in a second this is called basic this is cupcake this is trust this is cola contour it's a really dark contour normally I don't recommend mixing your powders with your creams but since I don't use this one on my full face I just use it on my eyes I just try and be really careful with it so that it goes with my eyes um, and I'm not like flipping back and forth um, and then this is my setting powder right here I use a bunch of it so I have two of those Cool, okay, so I'm gonna jump right in. If I miss your comments, I will go back when I get a sec and talk to you about it. Um, and yeah, if you want to buy the makeup, of course, there's a link above in the description. There's also a link to get yourself color matched. So I am using Mango because I have these darker under eyes right here and I have some redness on my cheeks, I think from the dryness of winter and my skin has been acting super weird this winter. I don't know if it's a combination of, I don't know, maybe I'm like just getting old or something and my skin is changing or maybe my, um, yeah, maybe something else is happening to my skin or maybe it's just the weather or whatever. But anyway, something is different with my skin right now. So I've been trying to figure it out and I have learned that mango is my friend in the winter. So I am using mango on some of my redness and my darker under eyes here. And it just gives me a better texture to my makeup. So if you are using this makeup and you're having a hard time with the texture or things like that, you may wanna try a darker highlight color. Um, and don't worry, because obviously it looks orange here, but I will go on and layer on a lighter one and um, anyway, it will all come together. Do I use Sandy much? Um, you just got that with candlelight. Sandy is awesome for covering redness also, especially if you're really fair. Um, and so, well, like if, you're, if your redness is also really fair, then you may be able to do like June or something, but um, if you're kind of like mid-tone like I am and you have some redness, Sandy is great for that too. It's really neutralizing, um, but Sandy is an awesome color. It's like a little bit lighter than mango and a little less warm, so hopefully that makes. Frenchie is so delicate. It is true. Um, that's why I chose it today for like a soft, subtle look um, because I actually put quite a bit of Frenchie on when I wear it because it's um, a really soft color. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my amber. I have a pretty good base of that mango on now and I'm going to switch it up and use my amber color which is more my normal skin color um, and I'm going just in between my eyes down my nose I'm keeping it pretty light and subtle this isn't one that if you want like 
super extra dimension, extra coverage, like all that stuff. I have other videos like that, um, but today's look is just kind of keeping it more simple. So I am just going around kind of the edges really lightly. Um, try and use as little product as possible to achieve what you're trying to achieve because it will wear better and it'll feel less sticky and stuff like that. Um, usually if it's feeling sticky, it's either the wrong color or you're using just too much product. And so you should really use just a tiny, tiny amount. Got an eyelash in the way. Okay. Thank you. My curls are the 22 millimeter. Nope, 25, that one. I was reading something else and I got distracted. Um, pregnancy changes a ton about your skin it's true and honestly like every step along it like pregnancy changes it having the baby changes it like nursing the baby changes it stopping nursing the baby changes it like all of it is like such an evolution everything just affects all of us so just don't be afraid to switch things up if something used to work and it doesn't anymore um, maybe it'll work again like if it's a different season or whatever um, but don't be afraid to switch things up that's why I kind of love these compacts because I can just order a different color like um, for a while I was even using linen which is really really light um, but I was able to use amber and linen because my skin could just support it but right now you would think in the winter I'd be able to use like a little bit lighter colors but I'm actually going a little darker so it kind of just like just be open to adjusting if you need to all right so I have my amber on and okay so if I back up a little bit it matches a little better when I'm really up close it kind of looks orangey to you but I found that the lighting that I do these videos on um, kind of makes that happen so don't worry I don't look like a new bloom, but most days. Um, yay, I'm glad that you're wanting to try some things. Um, your ma yours makes your face look dry after hours. So I would make sure that you have the right colors first of all, because it kind of should make your face look more hydrated um, than dry. So you can see how my skin like it fills in and it almost brings like a glow to my skin that's kind of like the goal with it and so you got a vanity for christmas that's fun you've never seen me live welcome amanda um if you use amber for your whole face what highlight do i recommend so it kind of depends if you're if amber is laying really well and you feel like um, it's feeling a little dark to you, but it's like melting in nice and stuff Then you could go a little bit lighter maybe bring in some aura or some candlelit um, If you're using amber and it's like breaking apart or you're seeing like streaks of brushes and and stuff like that You just can't get it to set in your skin then you need to bring in something darker like mango or sandy um, Okay, so that is my base foundation there. I am going to set mine lightly with powder um, I like to usually use a smaller brush and like really press it in, but, um, but my skin's like doing weird things. And I found, figured this out the other day that by using the big fluffy brush, it like distributes it nicely and helps it like not break apart as much. And so that's another thing is if something that you're using and doing is not working like super well anymore then just switch it up like everything is really versatile it's all about what works for you so don't be afraid to try other things and maybe you'll go back to your other way who knows okay and I like to use my fingers right here underneath my eyes to make sure that those creases and stuff aren't creasing can you guys hear the construction up there <sighs> we've had construction going on in the back of my live videos for how many months now like I don't know, six, five, something like that. Um, the blend, the sponges help a ton. Um, 
How often do I replace my sponge? I think you're supposed to replace them like every three to four months, but I've had this one for six, I wanna say, and I clean it with the brush cleaner too, and I clean my brushes at least every week, um, and I clean this just right along with them, and sometimes I'll clean this more often, um, but I'm just really gentle with it, basically, when I use it. Some people are pretty aggressive and they can cause like some tearing, so mine is starting to tear See right there, slightly. Um, and so that will start happening, but um, if you're cleaning them then, and taking care, good care of them, they should last you a few months. But, um, okay, so contour. Um, I am going to use olive, and I'm going to use the other side of this hack brush that I was using. This is the 30 second hack brush. And I am just putting a little bit of contour right here, and I'm going pretty subtle with it because I don't want like a super dynamic look um, and so just applied really lightly and I basically don't even have to blend it in so there's olive olive applies really smooth and seamlessly on me um, and if I try and do a more dynamic look with a darker contour usually it takes me a little bit more time to blend it out and stuff like that so if you're having a hard time blending things out it's looking patchy stuff like that and you want it just simple and quick and easy then i would go lighter with your contour or um warmer so there's like if you're using olive um and it's like going patchy on you then you can go up to aspen or warmer to stone um, and if you're using like Astoria you can jump up to olive if you're using indigo um, then you can jump up to olive but kind of like indigo is a little tricky because if you're a deeper skin tone you need you need indigo or otherwise olive won't show up at all so anyway play around with your colors it's kind of like the um, moral of the story Okay, so what's my best tip for blending the contour? Um, first of all, my, my very best tip is don't put too much on. So make sure you don't have a ton of contour, like it's better to have to re-dip and add more than it is to try and blend stuff away um, because <laughs> you're still waiting for the dab. So when you dab it on, <laughs> um, then you can start like in the back and distribute it and just press really lightly against that cheekbone so you can see that bone right there and if you can't see your bone then you could feel for your bone and you'll feel it kind of round right here and it'll round and then it'll get kind of squishy and so you just want to press up against that bone right there until it gets squishy um, and so if you apply a really small amount and you build up as you go then you won't have a ton of problems blending but my next tip for blending is don't use the same part of the brush that you applied the contour with to blend it. Um, if you're feeling like it's growing, then you can switch it up. This is a really awesome brush. This is the Powder Power Brush, and it has this really flat side here. And this is, side is awesome for buffing out those edges. And then you're using a brush that is taking product away versus putting more product on and growing your contour into places that you don't want it. So. Hopefully those tips help you. You can also use that perfector sponge. Some people like to blend with that. Um, okay, and then underneath your jaw, right here. And I just put a tiny bit. Make sure you're really blending it out. No one wants a crazy line on their jaw. So we're gonna go here and here. Um, what brush do I use for the setting powder? So sometimes I, d I use the powder power brush and other times I use the B squared brush. You just wanna make sure that whatever you're using for your powder, you're not then dipping in your cream. So like if you're using this big fluffy side for your blush, then you don't wanna like dip it in your powder and then in your blush cause it'll ruin the consistency of your blush. Um, and so pick, like pick a side basically, or if you're like me, you just have a second one so um but you don't need to have a second one but when you see me apply my blush later it's because i have a second one. okay so you can use any side of these for your powder um okay and yay erica i'm so glad do i ever put highlight on my neck i don't but i do put the bronzer on my neck 
So, um, <laughs> no, you're not behind. This is just how I do my makeup too. Like maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. Who knows? Okay, so also our color tone is like super weird right now. Okay, for nose, I like to contour with the detail hack brush because it has this really cool flat side and makes it really easy. If you only have the 30 second hack brush, you can either pinch this so it's skinnier right here and then draw it on the side of your nose or you can use like your pinky to distribute it or something like that. Um, so don't worry. If you don't have all the brushes yet, you can still achieve these looks. Um, the brushes just kind of like make it really easy. So since we're going for subtle, I'm using this lighter contour, then um, this won't be a pretty crazy line here. Hey, and if those of you who are new in here, we I kicked off my um, seven days of giveaway, minus Sunday, but there's still seven days. It goes through next Friday, but I cut out Sunday. And um, anyway, today's giveaway is a $300 mascara shopping spree so that you guys can get your own palette and brushes and all of that good stuff. So make sure that you are sharing this out and um, that you are like commenting, liking, engaging, all of that stuff. So, and then watch out for Instagram. The next one will be on my Instagram account, which is my name, Savannah Polson. But you can also type in Bold Beautiful Life. I think it still pops up if you type in Bold Beautiful Life, but it's not actually the Bold Beautiful Life account. I have two Instagram accounts. It's the one that's my name. So, okay, a little contour on the nose here. Blend it out a bit. You can make more intense contouring on your nose if you want, but since I'm going for subtle, I just went with what was naturally happening with my nose. Okay, so next I'm gonna move on to eyes now, and ooh, the clutch would be so fun. I have this, this is the new vegan clutch, and it's the, this is the navy one. I have all my stuff in it, and I've been loving it. It's like super easy to clean. You can just wipe it off, all that stuff. Um, your nose is crooked. Does that affect contouring? So if your nose is a little crooked, you can either try and kind of counteract that with contouring or you can just like not contour your nose um, and not like accentuate anything unless, you know, you like want to. So it's kind of up to you how you want to attack um, that, like attack your contour. So. Whatever you wanna do is great, but either way, I bet your nose is perfect and amazing. Okay, so switching to eyeshadow everything brush. And um, you're working from home with me in the background. Hi, Caitlin. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in with some of that, poof, did you see that cloud? Um, some of that vanilla dust setting powder because I wanna really make sure that I have a good solid base here. You saw I put the highlight color on and that's so that it's a really even tone to start with. And if there's any excess like oils or something on your eyelid, you're kind of taking care of that with this priming process. Um, and so then your eyeshadow will last a lot longer. It'll be truer to color. You'll have to use less eyeshadow um, and you'll have a better result. So that's why I do that. Um, okay, so now I'm going to use the color You Complete Me, and it's kind of a metallic-y color. And since we're going for a soft, subtle look, I'm not going to use a ton of it, um, especially because it's metallic. But I want to have this color come in. Because sometimes when you're going for a soft, subtle look, you want to you want to like bring something in that ha that brings a little life to your face. So you can't just do like, I mean you can if that's what you're going for, but like doing a super neutral tones and trying to like neutralize everything all at once will just leave you feeling a little like hollow and sunken. But if you can neutralize some things and then have warmth brought into others, then you'll have a more balanced look. So hopefully that's making sense. Okay, and this color, I am just going to sweep all the way up here. Just like that. 
Um, thank you to all of you who chimed in on what you want to see on my page on my last post. If you have, if you want an input on what more I post, then you can go comment on my, um, my last picture I just posted and tell me like if you want to see more style, if you want to see more of my marriage, if you want to see more tutorials, stuff like that, I would love to know um, because I'm kind of planning my content right now. So let me know what you want to see. It's like the post with a big brick wall in it, if you're wondering what the picture is. Okay, sorry, it's hard to read comments talk to you at the same time while I'm looking where I put an eyeshadow. Okay, so as you can see, this color is pretty um, dimensional on its own. And so honestly, I just wore this the other day and all on its own. So this um, color, this is actually what I was wearing when I went live with my little girls just to chat with you guys. This is the color I had on my eyelids. So it on its own looks really good because it has that slight like shimmer to it. Um, and so it kind of catches the light differently and adds dimension in there. So um, that is an awesome first start. I do have this weird dip in my eye right there that only shows up when I'm live. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> That's so, it's so funny, like how certain things, I'm like, this is in every video, but in my real life, it's never been there. Um, okay, so if you want to add a little more dimension, but you don't want to go crazy, like you don't want to worry about all this, you know, like balanced stuff, making sure you're going in the right direction, then you can grab a light color. I'm using, so I just used this color here, and now I'm using this one. It's called basic and it's kind of just like a warm medium brown and I'm just putting this right above my eyelid. You can like seriously you could open your eye and just go like this. This will work if you have hooded eyes. This will work if you have um, any kind of eye type. It's just open it up and go right here with it and you can see how much more dimension that gave than this side um, and so you don't have to worry about taking it all the way out creating this cat eye all of that stuff so you can just do a tiny bit right there and obviously you can build it up if you want more and we're gonna do this eye here open it up can you hear my baby laughing she has the best laugh ever Okay, and just for the sake of this video, I am going to make this part here disappear because <laughs> it bugs me in the video. Okay, there we go. I like, I like them to be balanced. So that just added a tiny bit of dimension to your eyes. Um, and next up, I'm going to do brows. I feel like no matter how subtle you want your makeup, do your brows. Everyone do your brows. You can do a lighter color on your brows if you want to be a little bit lighter, or you can just pick a good brow color and make sure that it gets it on your face every day. So I'm using Trust. Sometimes I use contour, but in this palette that I have right here, I have Trust and I don't have Indigo and Olive doesn't work on my brows. So anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. So in some videos, you'll see that I use my contour on my brows, but it's kind of just whatever is in my palette and lots of different things work. Um, you just have to figure out which, which tones you need. So I'm using Indigo and, or I'm using Trust and my Know Your Angles brush right here. And I am going to make this part a little bit more squared off there. Okay, and if you feel like your brows are too intense, just dab a little bit of setting powder over them and it'll soften them, but you'll still have the nice dimension that you need on your brows. I love embracing your natural beauty and all of that stuff, and I'm like, you don't need some things on your face unless you want them, but brows, everyone needs. Unless yours are already flawlessly perfect. In that case, own it. 
I take it all back. If you don't want brows, don't have brows. Anyway, I just want you to love, love you. Okay, so brows, done. Hi, Robin, welcome. You do need this brush. This brush is awesome. You haven't worked up the, the courage to do your brows. So start with something lighter, like start with your contour color or something like that. Um, unless your contour is like way darker than your brows, then don't do that. But um, it's awesome. So brows, here's my tip with brows if you're struggling with them. Draw the bottom line on and then just like feather in the top. So like the place you, pl the, the, where you place the color the first time will be the most intense part so don't like come in and place your color up here otherwise you're gonna create like a really intense brow um, but if you place it on the bottom where there's already like hair and stuff then whatever's left on your brush you can make it a little bit softer with the rest of it and you don't have to like keep dipping in and adding more and more and more product um, just like brush things out and yeah so make the bottom line the strongest part and then just kind of feather the top in until you figure it out so um you think cream is way easier on brows than a powder i actually agree i totally think that cream is easier so um yes it does take 10 to 15 minutes for sure so you can watch my real-time makeup video it's on youtube um it's also on my instagram tv but i do my full face of makeup in real time and you can see how long it actually takes me when i'm doing my makeup and not talking through it and it's like 15 minutes okay so now i have my eyeshadow on and i am going to take the same know your angles brush and Get the powder off of it because you don't want to mix powders and creams and i am going to take that cola contour and just create a little line right here next to my eye just right there and then open it up and slightly bring it up and out so i want it subtle and natural and I'm actually not going to do my bottom lash line just because this one is a soft and subtle makeup look so you can add a little bit if you feel like you want to add something to your bottom lash go for it um, if you feel like you want to add something but not black eyeliner then I'll show you what to do in a second so see how I always open my eye at the end of my eyeliner I always open my eye so that you're making sure your eyeliner is drawing itself up because if I closed my eye and kept going then my eyeliner would droop my eye down because that's just naturally where it's going so on the end of your eyeliner I always open up my eye and finish it with my eye open um, okay so if you want more on your bottom lashes take that basic that color that we deepened right here with and just swipe a little bit right here underneath and it'll give you like a soft eyeliner look but it won't be as harsh as like something black but it'll give you that dimension down on the bottom so you're just deepening it a little bit right there okay so now you put mascara on and I'm gonna try and read your comments while I am putting mascara on. I linked this mascara for you. It's the It Cosmetics Superhero, and I like it. Potty Brink locked the door because it's the only way to get it away. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, keep the eye open. Cola contour, thanks Tia. Okay. I can't read and not look at these at my eyelashes so some tips I guess for this mascara it is really thick and it has a tendency to clump more than some others but I actually don't like that other mascaras are so thin and you have to put like multiple layers on so that's the biggest reason I like this mascara is because it comes out of the tube like thick enough that you only can use one coat of it and you cannot re 
like retouch it later in the day like it basically is what it is all day long so I like that because I'm super busy mom and I just want to get ready once in the day anyway and I pretty much never get ready twice in the day so um I like that for that but you may want something that's buildable and if that is the case then this is probably not the mascara that you'll fall in love with but I love that it's just one coat just like that um and it goes on pretty easy for me it does um have like a shorter lifespan than some other ones but when you consider like that lifespan of when a mascara is actually good because I feel like other mascaras they it would take like two weeks for them to actually work well and then they would work well for a couple weeks and then there's the two weeks that you like suffer through at the end um, I feel like this one works really good like for a longer period of time in the lifespan of it Okay, and I'm not going to put mascara on my bottom lashes because I don't want to, <laughs> but you can if you want to, but I just feel like sometimes when I'm going for a softer look, I just like that I only have mascara on my top lashes. Um, okay, so I made it through without getting mascara on my eyelid but if you get mascara on your eyelid then take this part of the know your angles brush and wait till it dries and then you can just scrape it off like this and it leaves no trace all right so next up we are going to do some blush and bronzer so i am using the fluffy side of this b squared brush and i am going to dip it into frenchie and i use quite a bit of frenchie way more than i do of other colors especially darker colors like sandstone black cherry like all that stuff i use a really light amount in ever red and scarlet those ones they're super pigmented but with me with frenchie i can use quite a bit because it's really really subtle but look how it just brings like a tiny bit of warmth to your face. So I'd be careful with blush, especially if you are having like trouble with your colors, like sitting on your skin already. Um, I would be careful with not like rubbing your blush in a ton. Um, just kind of like dab it on and set it on and it will like have a better texture and everything will look good together versus you taking off the other stuff where they're all creams you're stacking on top of each other the creams have a tendency to just be creamy and awesome and blend together well um, but sometimes we don't want them to like blend each other out so much and you can like kind of smile pop your cheek and that'll help a ton and flip the brush over if you need to blend out something, don't use the brush that has color on it to blend things out. Otherwise, you're just going to keep growing it everywhere. Okay, so there's Frenchie. Just some subtle warmth on my cheeks. Um, it is so cute. Um, okay, you live in a humid climate, but you've been using the stay spray. Okay, it cut off your message um, on the bottom, but if this isn't the right answer, for some reason you can message me. But um, so in humidity with stay spray, if you have oily skin, I would suggest trying to use um, just a setting powder or find like a matte setting spray or something. Um, if you have drier or normal skin, then try the setting spray first as a primer and then um, apply your makeup after it sets in and dries, um, then you can apply your makeup and then use a setting powder on top versus um, the setting spray very last. Otherwise, um, I feel like the two together kind of like um, just create more moisture because of the humid air. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move to Bella Bronzer now because even if your makeup is subtle, you can still have a beautiful glowy tan. And I am going to put this on right here and it just kind of brings the two together and you can see how now that there's blush on and especially bronzer my contour really is super subtle and I didn't have to blend it out a ton so don't worry 
about blending your contour like completely out when you're applying because as you build on top of you know the different layers they kind of all melt together a little bit um okay and i'm going to warm up my nose just a tiny bit like we talked about i like to put bronzer on my neck because it kind of brings like the whole warmth together there and good sarah i'm glad i answered your question okay so next up i am going to I don't have my darker colors that I usually line my lips with, but um, since I am using kind of a darker lipstick, it's it's okay. So I'm just going to, this always happens, I like exfoliated my lips this morning and now they're like just talking to you guys. They like get gross. Okay, um, you've never used bronzer. So the bronzer, you want to use like a really really small amount and blend out and add more as you go but it's like creamy and sheer it's super nice you're worried about the foundation em emphasizing your pores make sure that you're using a color that's dark enough that's not accentuating texture um because that is kind of the key to all of it okay so i am just going to come underneath my lip here and just contour that a little bit and you can see how it just accentuates that bottom a little bit right there and then since I don't have an upper lip line at all um, I am going to try and create one with my contour really quick I had a dog bite me in case you're wondering um, your husband thinks you're crazy for watching these all the time hi husband my husband thinks I'm crazy too but he's right. Okay, so I try and create an upper lip line there and I'm just using contour to do that. Um, because my dog bite, see my scars? That's all right here. A dog bit my lip when I was a kid. So anyway, that's why I love makeup because you don't have to change who you are, but you can like create balance and stuff like that when you want it. Um, and then when you don't, it's fine. Okay, this is Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. And I'm using the color Seductress. And I like it because... I left you hanging because it's pretty neutral still but it's like a darker neutral not like a light nude color not like poet that I wear sometimes um, and I don't need a deep um, contour to like make the color work uh, I just used that to kind of create a little balance and like a guide for myself to put this on but you can easily wear this on its own so I like this color it's a nice neutral color. Um, and then right here. I love this stuff. It's like seven or eight bucks or something. I'm like, heck yeah. Okay. There we go. So that is Seductress. I'm gonna do this so I don't have lipstick on my teeth for the first time ever in a live video. Um, and then I like to use the Rose Gold Illuminator right here on the center. You can see how it just rings like a tiny bit of like dimension to it. And I like that. Okay, so last step, by the way, this is one of my more simple makeup looks, and if I was not on a video, it would be like quick enough. I could do it in the car on our way to the store. If my husband is driving, obviously, I don't do my makeup while I'm driving. Um, but it's like that easy, like super simple. I would do it in a carpool lane, waiting for my kid to come from school, all that stuff. Okay, so this is powder illuminator called Glamazing. 
and I am just coming right underneath my brow and you can you already see the difference there so something soft and subtle can also create a big impact if it's just placed in the right way you don't have to like go crazy with things um, but you can add so much life to your face with just a tiny bit of something so I'm coming right here underneath my whole brow just brightening that up right there and then I like to bring it on the inner corner here too because it adds just a tiny bit of like interest and sparkle so you can see the difference in there versus here just like that and glamazing is like a very intense powder illuminator so you could use like a more subtle one um, like Photoshop or Georgia or um, something like that if you wanted something more subtle um, okay so and then if you want see this is my finger just touching it it's pretty intense so I'm going to distribute that on my finger a little bit more but if you wanted a little bit on your cheekbone you can use your finger and put a little bit on like that or you could use a brush and distribute it but it will be more intense if you are using a brush because it'll apply like that and I am like toning it down a lot so there we go do I like the powders better than the cream illuminators I love the cream illuminators because they're so natural and glowy and they have like anti-aging and stuff in them but where my skin is like oily on like a normal basis I kind of love that a powder is not adding like more kind of shine and cream to my face. It's just adding like a little light and shimmer. So I feel like for my skin tone, I do prefer like a powder, um, but I still like use the creams quite a bit because I love the subtle like glow that they give. Um, but the creams are a lot more subtle than the powders. So just be aware of that. The powders can get intense really fast. Um, yeah, so there's my look. It's just simple and subtle and it's pretty neutral and soft because you brought in just like really soft tones. So it'll add nice life to your face, but it won't be like an over the top look. Um, so, so if you were doing a complete starter kit, how much would it cost? It kind of depends on what size palette you build. So um, if you want, so, and, and the different things vary in price. So the foundation colors, like the um, highlights, contours, foundations, um, all that stuff are, um, $14 and the eyeshadows are $12 and the powders are um, $16 so it kind of depends how you mix and match but then also it's always free shipping and when you run out of one like obviously I'll run out of this or I always run out of this way faster than I run out of the other stuff and I just pop this little tin out and it's just free shipping and only 14 bucks and I replace that every few months and the rest lasts me six months to a year, stuff like that. So um, it kind of depends, like your starter cost is the biggest, but um, usually it's just because you're building your whole compact at once. And from then on, it will never be that expensive again, unless you wanted it to be. Um, and then the brushes all vary in price too, and you can buy them individually or you can get them um, as, a, as a complete, like, collection and it, that saves you a little bit of money like if you're planning on buying all the brushes then definitely buy the collection of them um, that's 166 for all the brushes which is this 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 is that it one two three four five six seven this there's seven brushes and they're all double-sided so really you're getting like 14 brushes um, and they're all awesome, super awesome quality, really, really soft, all that stuff. So that is the brush collection. Um, okay, what day am I on for my hair? I washed my hair yesterday. So two, day two. Um, thanks friends. I love it too. I love mascara totally worth the investment. I agree. I was really hesitant when I first bought mascara, like how long ago has it been? Three years ago, maybe now. It's the first time I bought it. Um, and I was like, no way, like that little tiny tin, I'm going to go through that in like a day, like not worth it. And then I 
just decided to buy it because I loved the concept so much. And so I bought it and I was like, whoa, this is like lasting way longer. Plus it's like cutting out foundation, concealer, and a contour palette because that's now all in one. And so I was like, so I can create a really dimensional look way less money and way less products and i was like uh totally makes sense <laughs> so that's how i was hooked from the start but and um, do i whiten my teeth no i have whitening toothpaste though and we just bought like enamel strengthening whitening mouthwash the other day <laughs> so maybe they'll even go wider but um how often do i wash my hair once or twice a week usually um so no there's not samples Lisa, but there is a 30 day return policy. So if it doesn't work for you, then you have 30 days. So, um, awesome. Thanks Ivy. Thanks friends. You always get compliments on your makeup now since using mascara. I love that Andrea. I love that because it's like still you, like you are just as beautiful as ever, but it's just like the makeup brings it out in your face and it brings it out in your features and all of that. Stuff. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay, cool. Hi. I don't drink coffee. Hi, Mary. Um, thank you. How do I shield cream makeup from rubbing off during the day? So if there is like, mine doesn't rub off. Like I don't rub my face on anyone. Like if I hugged my husband, I would make sure I didn't like rub my face on his shoulder or something. Um, or like my kids. Um, I just try and not rub my face on them. But um, if we're like nuzzling or something like that, then I would rather nuzzle than worry about my makeup. But um, if you are having like some oiliness or some, or you like went and worked out and you want your makeup to still look good after or something like that, make sure that you're blotting versus rubbing. So I would take like, there's like those oil blotting tissues they sell like at the stores and stuff. You can like dab those on and that helps a lot. Um, or I'll use like if I'm exercising and I need my makeup to look good after, then I'll like take my towel and like just press on things versus rubbing. Same thing if you're like swimming or something and you get splashed in the face but you still want to look good. Because the boy you're crushing on is there at the party. Then just dab it. So, um, Okay, June or amber, darker than candlelit. So June is like the same darkness as candlelit, just a different tone. Amber is darker than candlelit. So thank you for sharing. Okay, well, I hope you guys are excited for these giveaways. If you are brand new to this video and you didn't catch the beginning, then we are, this video within it contains a $300 mascara shopping spree and there are more giveaways to come. So make sure you are watching on Instagram and on Facebook because there will be seven days of giveaways and Sunday is not a day of giveaways. So don't expect Sunday. And so there will be a post tomorrow, probably on Instagram. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there will be giveaways. So I'm excited and I love you all. And that is why this is hashtag BBL new year love because it's a new year and I love you. So I'm super excited for you guys and thank you for being amazing. Also, if you have input on things you want to see more of like more of I don't know what you'd want to see about me. More of my style or more tutorials or more of my marriage or my cute husband or something like that or more of our travels. Like go comment on my last photo, the one that has the brick wall behind it and I'm like standing in front of a brick wall. Um, go comment on there and tell me what you want to see more of and I'll try and incorporate that into um, more of my content this year. So you guys are awesome. Love you.